Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Pentecost to you all. Amen. So, so uh, this morning, Connie and Leah and Elijah are, are back in our usual spots, bringing you the service here today. The bishop will bring the homily, so that's why we're taping this ahead of time. A couple of announcements before we begin, however. First of all, I want you to take note of all the cranes. I hope that you can see them. I hope they're coming out well for you at home. 1,123 cranes. Wow. Amen, brother. It's an amazing amount of work that that required to do. So I want to thank everybody who uh, put together these cranes and swallows too. They're not all cranes, so they're swallows. Um, but how beautiful they are. And each crane represents a prayer. So uh, during this, what, 10 weeks that we've been sort of quarantined to know that we've been in prayer while we've been folding these cranes, it's, uh, what, a, what a, moving, a moving tribute. So thank you to all uh, for your participation in helping us to reach our goal of a thousand cranes by Pentecost. Uh, the only other announcement I want uh, to bring up is that later this afternoon at four o'clock, uh, we will have an agape meal, agape feast, a love feast, however you, uh, you know it as. Um, and it'll be via Zoom. So uh, the uh, bulletin or the liturgy for that event was sent out on Thursday and keep it connected. It was also sent out yesterday at noontime with the invitation to join us, the Zoom invitation. Uh, it was sent out at noon on yesterday, Saturday. So I do invite you to, to go into your email and find that, bring it up. Uh, just click on the Zoom uh, link at four o'clock in the afternoon and we'll all be joined live for an agape meal or an agape feast. In terms of what you need at home, uh, bread is good, uh, wine or juice is fine, but you can really use anything in your house uh, if you don't have those things uh, to share in the agape meal today. So uh, I look forward to seeing you all live later on this afternoon. All right, so let us begin our service today. The service folder has been uh, downloaded onto the internet uh, into our website as well, so uh, you're welcome to, uh, to download that or look at it on a separate device as we follow along today. So why don't we all stand here? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now for our opening hymn.
We will now continue with the invitatory and the soul. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our invitatory today is from enriching our worship. And we will pray it together today uh, in unison. Together. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, if you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, my right hand holds me fast. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 104, and we will pray it together today, uh, responsively, actually, by half verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all, the earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there's that Leviathan. Which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. To give them their food in due season. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now for our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But the others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. 
Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken throughout the prophet, throughout the prophet, or through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prop prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. first letter to the church in Corinth. No one could say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the menace, menace manifestation of the spirit of the common good. To one is given through the spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge accordance with the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing by one spirit. To another the workings of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernments of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the, with one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from John. On the last day of the festival, the great prophet, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in God drink my God. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit of God. Which believers in him were to receive? For us yet, there was no Spirit. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I seem to have missed it all these years. The story of Pentecost Day is as familiar as any in the scriptures. I've read it, I've told it countless times. Here is this great global gathering a crowd of people from every nation under heaven, says the text. Every lay reader vies to be the one to read on this Sunday to get that list. Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, not to mention the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene. Has to be true, by the way. Nobody would make up a detail like that. So with all those people, and all the noise of that violent wind, and all those tongues of fire lashing around to land on the apostles, I guess I just assumed that all of this took place outdoors. Must have been some big public square, right? But no. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and a sound like the rush of a violent wind filled the entire house where they were sitting, says the text. They were in a house. Somehow this detail had escaped me. All this drama took place in a house. Evidently, then, with all that wind and noise and hazardous pyrotechnics, they moved then outdoors to begin their polyglot proclamation, but it started indoors. I've been missing all these years that crucial initial movement of the day of Pentecost, how the apostles move from inside the building out into the world and thus completes the transformation from Good Friday to the dawn of the church. After Jesus' crucifixion, the disciples are terrorized, demoralized, paralyzed. They huddle behind closed doors. And then the risen Christ comes and breathes spirit into them. You remember the story, we heard it on the Sunday after Easter, and one choice for today's gospel repeats the same story, how Jesus said, peace be with you, and breathes on them, and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So then the risen Lord is with them for 40 days, and then he ascends to heaven, and darn it, he's gone again. And they sit around for 10 days, Ascension tide, we call it, an in-between time, if ever there was one. Here they are, holed up again behind closed doors, slipping back perhaps into that discouraged, paralyzed state. But now, violent wind, tongues of fire, a multilingual miracle. The apostles are blown out into the world on the phenomenal winds of that spirit, full of confidence and faith 
and proclamational proficiency. Huddled and anxious behind closed doors, sheltering in. Sound familiar? On Pentecost Day, the apostles are catapulted outdoors. The Holy Spirit turns them from dispirited to spirited and gives them hope. And boy, could we use some of that spirit. We could use that spirit right now. And of course, we've got it. From today's epistle, these familiar words, there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. The Holy Spirit is with us every step of the way. And that Holy Spirit comes blowing again and again that on its winds we may be empowered anew, both recipients and agents of God's healing. <clears throat> About five years ago, a documentary film appeared. It was called when God left the building. A screening was held right here at our cathedral. The film profiled two churches in decline. One of them was spiraling into oblivion as its members fought with one another, blamed the pastor, and had crises of faith. The other church, too, was wrestling with its future and not quite sure what to make of one of its faithful members who had crazy ideas like opening an outreach in a local pub. The theme of the documentary was how a church might take its life and ministry from inside its walls to outside its walls and how it might embrace change. How to turn a church from a noun denoting a destination to something more like a verb, an action, a way of being. Church, not just within its building, but outside of it as well. For the past two months, we have been suddenly and unexpectedly cast out of our buildings. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced us out. It has forced us to embrace change whether we wanted to or not. It has redefined ways that church both is and is not a destination. It's invited us into new ways of worshiping, new ways of being together, even more puzzling perhaps, new ways to serve the world around us. The crisis has deprived us in many ways. Perhaps it has also unbound us in other ways. In many churches, daily prayer offerings have taken hold where they never had been seen before. Elderly and shut-in members are feeling reconnected by online worship now available to them. Study groups and discussions draw new participants from distant points. One statistical study in England suggests that not only is online worship attendance up, but one-third of the viewers are under the age of 35. A remarkable development. The Pentecost wind filled the entire house where they were sitting, and when they left the building, at the sound of that Pentecost wind, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking to them. Turns out that meeting people where they are, instead of just waiting for them to come to where we are, is not a bad idea. 
I wonder what we are learning from this hard time of both deprivation and liberation. I wonder how we will be changed. I wonder what former things we will cherish more than ever. I wonder what former things we will discover really don't matter so much. I wonder what new things we will not want to relinquish for all the world. You and I are eager to get back into our church buildings together. Of course we are. We miss one another. We miss the nourishment that we receive there. Ours is a tradition that values deeply the experience of sacred space. We are not yet able to be back in our churches. It's simply not yet the time. But in due course, it will be. The time will come. And as we prepare for that time, I've been thinking about one more theme of that documentary, When God Left the Building. Alongside of those two declining congregations, the documentary profiled another institution as well. It profiled the Eastman Kodak Company. Even more dramatically than those two churches, the Kodak Company collapsed. From dominant and ubiquitous to marginal and forgotten, it fell. And the documentary editors suggest why. Kodak misunderstood what business it was in. Kodak was certain that it was in the film business and they knew how to make film. But in the end, film was only the medium. The real business was images. Some of the earliest research and development of digital photography occurred at Kodak. Had Kodak understood itself as being in the image business, the story could have been different. But the new medium was not embraced. The corporate executives looked to what they knew. The board, or was it Kodak's vestry, or maybe it was the Kodak's bishops, probably it was the bishops, were not interested or not capable of seeing. And the rest is history. Does the church know what it's for? Asks the documentary. Do we know our reason for being? Do we know our deepest purpose? In due course, slowly and responsibly, we will find our way back into our worship spaces. But let us remember that the Pentecost spirit has blown us out into the world, sent us there 2,000 years ago, and in paradoxical ways, the spirit is sending us there again in 2020. I expect that if we are to sort out what we need to learn from this experience, we will do well to be mindful of the parable of Kodak, to ask what really is our deepest purpose? What are we for? Two years ago this week, I lost my dearest mentor. George Council, a colleague and friend for more than 30 years. George rarely spoke of his family in sermons, wise man that, but here is one of his stories with which to conclude. George wrote, some years ago, one of our daughters took a serious interest in music and set out to become a professional as I sat with her one day before an important audition, I handed her a card that read, 
let them know you love it. George knew that competence and proficiency and even beauty would not be enough. Let them know you love it, said the card. And George continues, our goal as Christians is so to live that the world may know that we love life for the love of God who gave us this wondrous gift, the grace to enjoy it, and a passion to share it for the sake of Jesus Christ. To love and to share the gift of life for the sake of Christ. This is our purpose. This is our reason for being. For this did Jesus say of the Spirit, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. For this the Holy Spirit anointed the heads and warmed the hearts of the apostles on that first Pentecost day. For this the Spirit gave them courage. For this the Spirit equipped them to cherish the old and embrace the new. The apostles were transformed that Pentecost day from anxious to confident, from traumatized to energized, from dispirited to spirited. And so may we be this day. Happy Pentecost, Massachusetts. Pentecost blessings to you. I invite you all to stand here. Let us profess our faith today through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our suffrages today also come from enriching our worship. I will read the versicle and I invite you to read the response. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation. Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations. And your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. O God, on who this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. 
Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our prayers to the people today, we, we will use Form 2. If you're following in the prayer book, it can be found on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan and Gail, our bishops, the lay and ordained leadership of our church, our diocese, and our parish. For this virtual gathering, and for all ministers and people. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, Pray for St. Andrew's Church in Methuen, St. Paul's Church in Newburyport, St. Paul's Church in North Andover, and the Merrimack Valley Deacons Project. Pray also for the Second Church of Plymouth UCC and our shared ministry here in the town of Plymouth. I ask your prayers for peace for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Remembering Donald, our president, Charlie, our governor, all our national, state, and local officials, pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor and the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, including those on our parish prayer list and those we remember now, either silently or aloud. Be with Doris Johnson, Karen Waller Derby, Bennett Burnham, Mary Conway, Debbie Perry, Muriel Kelly. Pray especially today for those who are sick or isolated, or those on the front lines who are caring for them, including Angela Andre, Aoife Bennett, Ed Bradley, Kathy Cole, Andrea Colby, Jen Correa, Honor Davis, Eleonora de Toca, Dacia Dillman, Fallon Ellis, Casey and Sam Fall, Sharan Johnson, Brittany Kilduff, Alyssa Killam, Amy and David Kruzman, Drew Lynch, Judy Lutz, Kristen McLean, Nicole Miller, Tom Morris, Liz Morse, Jackie Page, Lauren Patton, Ann Rich, Melissa Thomas, Lynn Tinkham, Christina Tomasco, Donald Walbert, Callie Wendt. Remember Amy, Heidi, Janine, Jen, Megan, Melinda, and Terry. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. 
Pray for those who have died, including Jacqueline Adams, who is Keisha Nielsen's grandmother, who died recently. I invite you now to offer thanks for those things that you are grateful for this Pentecost day. The good earth, for our families, for our parish community, for the flowers. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Now God, we lift these prayers to you through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude our service today with a general thanksgiving. And let us pray together. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out upon them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with God's blessing, that you may abound more and more in that Spirit forever. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to Christ in word and deed. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be upon you and upon those you love this day and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now for our concluding hymn.
stuff. Have a great week, everybody. Blessings.